next part here is Tupac talking with the legendary Sway, pretty much about Puffy, Biggie, and some of his issues, you know, with the East Coast, West Coast beef. Now, some of you probably heard this, but some of you probably didn't. I'm going to let the tape roll after this, you know, and, um, and move on to do what I got to do. If you didn't already do it, make sure you like this video and share this video with a friend. Roll tape. What happened was Biggie came at a time, just like what Hitler did with the Jews. Biggie came at a time when they were open to somebody saying, we're the master race and these guys are sh nothing and they're pretenders and this is why we're not making it in the business because of these guys. This is why we're not doing nothing because of these guys. So the East Coast really not hating us, really not knowing nothing about us, but just listening to their supposed to be leader, you know, listening to the person that was representing for them. Like, yeah, okay, well, Biggie, no, you know, he from Brooklyn, woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what happened. And so all of a sudden people saying stuff that they didn't even know was well, what they was doing was like ending our, our culture where we started. We held it down for y'all. That's how I felt. I, I was in tears like, what? <laughs> when y'all was out there on some, when LL was, was dancing with, with women in silver suits and niggas was on some other shit, which I'm not mad at because I might do that one day. And I love them <laughs> niggas, you know what I mean? But I'm saying when you was being creative and wanting to try other boundaries, we was holding it down with this whole- One more thing, the, uh, double up there. Man. Is that so profound what you're saying? But it's real, huh? It's real. It's so real. I never hey, thought about it. Hey, but it's realer it. it's, than it's what so brothers... It's so profound. They, see, people think it's, it's realer than what they think. People you know? think I just got out of jail and was like, just because I got shot on the East Coast, I'm like, fuck the East Coast. Yeah. No. Yeah. Half the rappers from the East Coast was there when I got shot. Nobody knew a thing. That's just like you coming to the hood and the police ask them what happened, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, I don't know. You know they lying. Mm -hmm. And all I was doing was like... Give me my proper etiquette. Mm -hmm. If Biggie was out here on the West Coast, he was in the studio with me and we homeboys, and he got shot, no, I wouldn't tell him who did it, but he would want, I wouldn't go ride on niggas who did it, but he want to know who did it. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, look, man, these niggas from Watts did it. Woo, this is why they want to talk to you. When, when, when. That's how I do it. Just like when the niggas from the 60s wanted to get a stretch. I went to them personally and talked to them. Mm -hmm. I do it by the rules of etiquette. So I got shot. I'm like, yo, what happened? Come see me in jail. Biggie all in the air to my year park is my homeboy wound, but not seeing me. My homeboy Stretch is going to Biggie's concerts. Niggas is like abandoning me. Mm -hmm. But all in the air and on TV, they like, yeah, pop, rest, you know, keep the struggle on. I was like, yo, I'm starting to turn into like Slick Rick. Mm -hmm. Niggas is just gonna act like I'm gonna just be in jail and they gonna give me shout outs and try to take my position. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, that's what Biggie did. Listen to his, I, I, I was there, nigga, I trained the nigga, he used to be under me like my lieutenant. The nigga, I used to come in New York, I used to do shows and let the nigga come on before I did keep your head up and get around. Because mm -hmm. nobody knew the nigga in New York. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell a nigga, yo, if you hey, want to you know make what? your money, I'm, I'm, you got to rap for the bitches. Do not rap for the niggas. Yeah, I told yeah, yeah. a nigga, don't rap for the niggas. The rap for the from. bitches. The bitches will buy your records and the niggas want what the bitches want. So all of a sudden, he changed from being, listen to party and bullshit. Listen to his style. He changed from that to Big Papa yep. because of me. He had my album, Me Against the World, was the second one. He had the first one. I changed everything because Ready to Die came out and it sounded like my album. Mm -hmm. All my album was about, you know, dealing with death. Mm -hmm. And then he came out Ready to Die and I had to switch it. Wow. That's why it was less East Coast rap, East Coast beats because Biggie had just took my shit. That's what, but you could listen to it. That's what, that, that was his success too because he took like, Listen, West Coast sound. We flipped and, and it. I slang. told him that. I told you know, him that I trained. He was supposed to be. He was supposed to be Thug Life. Mm -hmm. All while he was coming up, I used to let him come on stage with me. He was screaming Thug Life. Hey, cause I he was like, I hate stadium. Brooklyn. I hate me. Yeah. I don't. I'm out with them niggas. Puppy cheating me. Woo woo woo. All of a sudden, he blew up, and he wasn't saying Thug Life. Mm -hmm. So I started getting mad, and I was seeing the niggas place. He was hugging me. Yo, Pac. Yo, thank you. He's the only nigga that woo woo. woo. But he and he told me like about a week before I got shot. He knew the nigga that was shot me, and he was like, Pac, don't around this nigga, you know me, you know, we walked in with the nigga that shot me, that ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga, because I knew the nigga too, he was my mm -hmm. co-defender. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later, and we didn't talk. Ne the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'ma come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While well, I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail, yo, we just got pop, woo, woo, woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York, cause I got family out there. Mm -hmm. He sitting right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my whole boys just jacked that nigga Tupac. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened, and everything.
they mad because I know what happened. That's why they all, you know, they're bringing them, they're not rotten. That's why what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. I'm destroying them. Mm -hmm. I fucked his wife. I'm fucking them in the game. I'm destroying them. He lives by the rules of the game. He lives off a of mafia image. I'm bringing him, showing how he, he totally disregarded the rules of the game, and he's everything but a mafia nigga. Mm -hmm. You reinventing it. Right. I'm showing him. Nah, you know what I mean? Like if anybody's a mafia he, nigga, me, nigga. He, I fucked your bitch. I took five shots. I went in your crew. I mean, I just what? Mm -hmm. I went to New York. They don't do shows out here. I went. I did Saturday Night Live. Y'all forgot. <laughs> Live in New York where everybody knew I was going to be there on stage. No problems. Went to the clubs, everything. In the middle with my West Side ride. You know what I mean? Because I'm real about it. I don't hate New York, but if y'all don't understand it, then fuck it. You get rolled over too. Because I hear y'all. I was in jail and I heard what they were saying on the radios. You know how we got the Wake the Up Show? Right. You know, they yeah, got their own shows. They got their little mixed shows with Red Alert and this nigga and that nigga and, and um, what's his name? Um, Flex. And I swear to God, dog, they used to diss the West Coast. They had these commercials where they'd be like, hey, dog, what's up, dog? And I used to be like, in jail in New York on my radio, like, oh, shit. <laughs> You know how you would feel if you yeah. heard your homeboy oh. go home and just clowned you? And I was like, oh, man. Oh, and all my homeboys like, yo, puppy just did a show out here. I was like, how was it? It's like, good, we gave him love, we gave him this, we gave him that. He was talking all this unity shit. But then when they go home, they be popping Q-tip. They made all these underground tapes dissing us. Q-tip? Yes. Q-tip. Q-tip me on some So shit. then when niggas ride back, then they want to talk about the culture and be hip hop and shit again. But that's not fair. Mm -hmm. How you gonna be bold? And that's what they all do. They all play badasses. Same thing for the Fuji's. They just diss me on, on the air on MTV. Fuji's diss you? They're not personally, they're just the West Coast. They just introduced my video, they're like, California love. The East Side is the best side. Ooh, oh, I yeah. seen them. All them niggas was talking about how much they respect me and love me. See, I hate that. Because I be they, dead serious. It's one thing when they say that. Now Chino XL is talking about me. He got a rhyme, well, you know how you always got these little metaphors. He say, you'll get fucked like Tupac did in jail. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling y'all beforehand, off the air, I'm gonna beat this nigga's ass. And oh, everybody's yeah, gonna be talking about mm -hmm. how wrong I am, how I haven't changed, but what am I supposed to do mm -hmm. with a nigga disrespecting my manhood like that? See what I, I mean? Really it's like I can't yeah, get out the game. Just yeah, like I'm yeah. saying, just like Scarface and that Carlitos. Where I want to be legit. I'm got we got restaurants coming up with Alanis Morissette, Me, Snoop, Sugar, and Alanis nice. Morissette. Open up a restaurant. Alanis is nice. I'm doing a soundtrack. Cool. My first soundtrack. I'm the music supervisor for this movie. I'm doing. Woo! I got Alanis on there, Michelle, Inclasia, whatever her name. All these, all these, all these alternative nice stars. No rap. Coming out. All this shit coming up. But what's gonna reign supreme in '96 and '97 is the ride I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like. I feel like I'm doing it for hip hop. All I'm trying to do is get the imposters out. I remember Biggie sleeping on my couch. I remember begging bitches to fuck him. <laughs> oh! You feel me? Yeah. So, Big Papa don't mean nothing to me. He know it. He know it. That's why he can't fight me. That's why he can't battle me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can make know, songs you know talking exactly you about him. He can't talk about me because he know. He know you I'm know the one that used to buy him champagne. All that shit he talking, that was me buying him that. He talking about my lifestyle with his album. Because when he was doing his album, he was broke, nigga. I was having money. I, the, the shit he talked about was my life. Thug life. That's what he talking about. All that junior mafia, them niggas was young motherfuckers that used to hang around that I used to give money to to get on a train to go home at night. Little season and all of that. They came and all of that. Yeah, so now they rapping against me. and You, you can imagine how I fucking feel. Mm -hmm. When, when I got arrested in New York, I got arrested for Biggie. Them guns in my room was Biggie's guns because them cowards left the room when they heard the police was downstairs and everybody left their guns in my room. So I got four guns in my room. Serial numbers scratched out and I did not snitch. I took that case. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how I feel when I'm in jail for that case. And he out there living a mafia lifestyle, giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. Mm -hmm. I'm not paranoid. Nah, nah, what? Y'all niggas know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you what it is is that the East Coast drug dealers got them niggas under extortion. Mm -hmm. I came and fucked up everything. Because mm -hmm. I dissed them niggas in the Daily News. They put a hit out on me. When the niggas tried to rob me, which is all they wanted to do, I knew what they told me. That's what they was telling me. Pop. They were sending me messages through my closest road dog saying, Pop, why did you fight them? They was just coming to take your shit. But I wasn't letting nobody take my shit, and I was strapped that day. Mm -hmm. 
That's what was I couldn't put in the bar. I had two two double glocks on it. And when I pulled for my shit, that's when I got shot. That's it, that's and the reason I knew my homeboys set me up is because my homeboys knew I was strapped. The dudes came straight for me. My homeboys is behind the niggas. Like they running for Trey. My homeboys behind the niggas and they didn't do nothing. They knew I was strapped. All they had to do was grab the nigga. Mm -hmm. And I could have bust. But they got guns so these niggas are coming for me and these niggas just sitting there. And they say get and these niggas drop to the floor. I knew it was a setup. Nobody come downstairs to after them shot. And then after you shot, now how did we after you shot, you went up there, they looked at you like you was a ghost? Yo, when I walked upstairs sway on everything I love. <laughs> I seen it in their eyes. I could never describe this look until you get shot and you see it yourself. Mm. Niggas looked at me like this. I walked out the elevator, because I walked out the elevator, I didn't know I was shot in my head or nothing. I, I wasn't, they said in the vibe interview, I was acting like I was in a movie. Mm. What they really trying to say is this nigga is raw. Mm -hmm. I got shot five times, came upstairs, did not know I had got shot five times. I thought I only got shot once. Yeah, dude, sound like you got a lot on your chest. Oh my God. <laughs> It's been so long since the bays heard from you. And I mean, that's why I'm giving it to you. you straight raw because you got to go back mm -hmm. and tell them the shit that we ain't recording. I'm giving you that, you know, not to tell them the specifics, but you but know when somebody calls know. you, go, yeah. yo, why did you do this? You know, they go, trust me, we talk to them, we know, mm -hmm. blam, blam, blam. Now y'all know, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just like they niggas on their radio stations know.